be the vehicle line manager on that fantastic vehicle, the 2016 Mazda MX-5 Miata. As we go through this day, there's a couple of things I want you guys to be focusing on as you're driving this car, as you're listening to this presentation, kind of absorbing this whole wonderful Four Seasons thing. Um, and these are some of the guiding principles behind this car. Lightweight, affordable roads for this fun to drive. Now, pretty much anything that you experience in this car, anything that you like, anything you have a question about, or anything you're wondering, why did Mazda do things this way? One of these, or a combination, or all of these can answer that question. Why did they make it a little bit smaller? Why did they make it lighter? Why did they take some weight off? Why did they add more aluminum? Whatever it is, it can be answered with one of these principles. <clears throat> now, how do you turn principles like that into engineering? Well, constant engineering is the concept. Constant engineering is basically something that we started back with the NA, the very first generation. MX-5. And what constant engineering says is that emotional values are more important than numerical benchmarks. So what that means is basically, whether it's Mazda or any other car company, when you're building a sports car, you have numerical benchmarks. You want the car to go from 0 to 60 in this amount of time. You want it to stop at this amount of distance. You want certain lateral Gs, horsepower, torque, weight, what have you. But the thing is, none of that really translates into how it feels to drive the car. As you recall from the previous slide, fun to drive is the most important thing with this car. So how do you translate that <coughs> on the drive? Well, for Mazda, we basically said every engineering team, whether you're responsible for suspension, steering, transmission, what have you, you have to turn your numerical benchmarks into an emotional value. So that means if the car goes 0 to 60, does that feel exhilarating? If you can brake at a certain distance, does that feel safe? And if you have a certain lateral G, is that kind of add confidence? So all of these numerical benchmarks will turn into emotional values because at the end of the day, the car has to be fun. I mean, basically, nowadays you can find a V6 Camry or a Ford F-150 is probably as fast as a Ferrari 308 from the late 70s was. But I don't know how many people would put their reputation on saying that a Camry is more fun than a Ferrari. Anyone? No brave souls. I had one yesterday. He caught himself and put his hand <laughs> so that's the, the third kind of constant engineering. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> these numbers right here, 1.6 liter engine, 116 horsepower, 100 foot pounds of torque, tiny 14 inch wheels, 2100 pounds of weight, and 0 to 60 in under 9 seconds. Now, if I were to go out in the world with these numbers and to ask people, does this seem like a car that's really fun to drive? Who here would say that the public would say that this represents a car that's fun to drive. Any great souls? Anyone else? He might know something, or are you just doing that? Oh, there we go. So, based on the numbers, people would say, absolutely not. This is maybe a Yaris or a Honda Fit. In fact, I think the Honda Fit has bigger wheels, more horsepower, more torque. But, in fact, these are the numbers for the very first MX-5, which proves that the numbers alone don't tell the whole story, because we know this is one of the most fun, enjoyable cars ever made in automotive history. So that is the very essence of constant engineering. <clears throat> now that I've told you all those numbers don't matter, here's a sheet full of numbers that matter. <laughs> as long as hope you're paying attention. So the MX-5 is sky active, um, of course, just like the models that preceded it, the Mazda 6, the Mazda 3, the CX-5. The fourth gen is 150 pounds lighter than the third gen. And the way we approach that, as I referred to in the video, is our grand strategy. So there's some major <clears throat> components of the engine, transmission, more aluminum in the body panels, etc. But the grand strategy also says every single component needs to be assessed. Can we make it lighter? Can we make it better? Can we make it stronger? Uh, Dave Coleman is going to talk about his parts petting zoo over here. So after the show, come down and look at third gen parts versus fourth gen. You can literally feel the weight difference in some of the components. So whether it's engine, transmission, or even the construction of the seat, we do whatever we can to look at everything to try to bring that weight down and gram by gram to get to that 150 pounds. Also, the car is a little shorter. Um, this car is a lot closer to the first gen in length than um, the third gen. So it's about 4.1 inches shorter than the third gen. But despite it being shorter, it actually has more legroom and headroom. Now, the SAE numbers technically are going to be the same as the third gen. But through some ergonomic magic, we've actually increased the, the measurement that you're going to feel. 
So we lowered the H point on the seat about 10 millimeters. Um, the steering wheel diameter is reduced just ever so slightly. The tilt is a little bit um, bigger range of tilt than the steering wheel. And the seat back, because the, the seat is designed with thinner material, which Dave will discuss, allows the seat to click back with more space. Also the roof design. So all these different things go into providing you with more headroom and legroom in the car. Faster. Faster 0 to 60 than the previous gen. Now, how many of you remember when we announced in February 155 horsepower in this car? Any? You any? When you heard the 155 horsepower, how many people were actually surprised that we offered less weight? I mean, sorry, less horsepower um, on this car than the previous gen. No one's surprised. Two great things. So basically, at least what we could see out there in the forums and everything, there was a lot of outrage, a lot of surprise that we would actually build a fourth gen with less power than the third gen. We don't publish 0 to 6 numbers. We leave that up to your industry to do that. But based on um, several publications, the 0 to 60 times this car is anywhere from 6.2 down to 5.8, 5.9 seconds. So significantly faster than the third gen, the fastest MX-5 ever. And when we announced the 155 horsepower, a lot of people were saying, this car should really have 200. That seems to be the magical benchmark that everyone's expecting. I guess because that's what the FRS BRZ um, has. And according to Motor Trend, we're faster than the FRS BRZ as well. Despite it being significantly faster, it's also more fuel efficient. So 34 MPG highway, 27 city for the manual, 36, 27 for the automatic. So 28% improvement on highway MPG, 22% on uh, city MPG, so a significant improvement in fuel efficiency. And finally, um, in terms of the handling, I won't really get into that. I'll let you guys be the judge. You'll probably be behind the wheel in about an hour or so. 